Center this morning. Here's Jim Telemonte. Inbound, Kennedy traffic stuffed up. Canfield moves to the way to the Bird Circle at 46 minutes. O'Hare to downtown, 19 from Montrose. Same on the Express. Now about 38 minutes to O'Hare. There was an earlier crash at Ogden. Aiden's 18 minutes by Cook Junction, now about 23. Eisenhower, 55 minutes, 390 to downtown, 40 from Wolf, now about 35 minutes to 390. Stevenson, 56 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. Bryant, 42 minutes, 95th to downtown. Northbound Tri State traffic, slow Archer to LaGrange Road. Stevenson to the Hinsdale Oasis. From Reagan Toll, right to the Grand Avenue Curve. It's about Reagan Toll, it's heavy Naperville to Gackley. Northbound Veterans Memorial Fountain to Ogden. Traffic. I'm Telemonte on AM 560 The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next in our one hour heating and air conditioning weather center. Sunny skies will top out at 26 today, 13 at O'Hare, 11 at Midway, 7 in Aurora. Your next news update is at 8. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560 The Answer. This hourly segment is brought to you by Papa Nicholas Coffee. Papa Nicholas Coffee, roasted fresh daily in Batavia, Illinois. Addison, part of our signature bank business tour. People are starting to arrive for work. That's good. And there you go. Three amigos yeah. in front of us. We we'll... start earlier than most. That's no yeah. question about that. I uh, wanted to uh, switch gears from our talk about all things electoral politics. Now, interesting new book out from Stephen Levy, who is the editor at large for Wired. A new book out on Facebook. And uh, Stephen Levy has known Mark Zuckerberg for some time, uh, going back to really the uh, the, the uh, inception of Facebook back in the, the early part of the first decade of this century. And uh, so he has a real perspective, broad perspective on how Mark, Mark Zuckerberg has evolved and how Facebook has evolved with it. So we're pleased to be joined by Stephen Levy, the book Facebook, The Inside Story. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Good morning. So why don't we? Yeah, good morning. So why don't we start there, just with since you have um, that sort of institutional experience with Zuckerberg that dates back uh, almost two decades. Uh, why don't we start there and just your your perspective at sort of a top line level of how he has evolved and his company with him. Um, yeah, we've heard all heard a lot about Mark, and you know, kind of as you mentioned, I had a lot of chance to see him as he uh, grew and tried really to ride on the back of this tiger that he unleashed um, in his dorm room in 2004, which now is the biggest network the world has ever seen. When I heard. Um, that Facebook had a billion people online the same day. I think it happened at the end of the uh, summer of 2015. I knew, wait a minute, I've been watching this company all along, but I've got to write a book about it now. And it's been a struggle. On one hand, his ambition led to the construction of this network, which now, if you count all the properties like Instagram and WhatsApp that go with Facebook, it's almost 3 billion people, really a big chunk of the whole planet. Um, but opening that up, as people have found out, causes a lot of problems. And I was able to chart step by step how both the network grew and how decisions they made led to those problems. Well, let's uh, pinpoint one of the problems and how that evolved. Sure. Uh, well, one problem is that when you extend the network uh, all over the world, um, and Mark uh, early on decided, you know, uh, he was going to grow things. I got into his early life and, and learned that he was obsessed with the game Risk, for instance. You know how that game works, that you have the world before you, and you go country by country trying to take it over. Um, when he realized Facebook was working at Harvard where he started, he wanted to, like, moved to other uh, campuses and, you know, one by one, like a winning, winning game of risk, he took them over. And then when he moved the company to Silicon Valley and dropped out of college, he wanted to then take over uh, pretty much the world by having, you know, uh, Facebook move country by country. But they moved so quickly that they didn't have people who spoke the language of some of these countries and couldn't monitor what was happening uh, as it went to countries like me. Myanmar, which only recently had gotten connected. People got phones and got on the internet for the first time, and they didn't know how to assess the content that was coming on, and uh, forces came on, which 
presented fake news, if you want to call it that, uh, certainly inaccurate posts that actually led to violence. And uh, so Facebook was, was faced with this problem that perhaps they should have anticipated, and they were slow to act to address it. How would you describe Mark Zuckerberg's politics and, the, and uh, how important politics is to him? Well, it's becoming increasingly important. When uh, originally he thought that this was something that he wouldn't have to pay a lot of personal attention to. He hired this fantastic executive uh, in Silicon Valley named Sheryl Sandberg uh, in 2008, and he split up the company. He said, uh, listen, Sheryl, I want you to take all the things that I'm not interested in. I'm, I'm a product guy, and I'm going to build the products of Facebook. But Sheryl, you could be in charge of sales and policy and things like that. And Sheryl had worked for the Treasury Department um, in you know, the Clinton administration. And uh, so she was well equipped uh, to do that on one hand. On the other hand, uh, it became increasingly important, particularly after the 2016 election, uh, where people understood that Facebook was a tremendous political force. So Mark tried to avoid it for a while, but now he realized that's a big mistake, that he really should have realized how the product interacts with the politics. And now he's um, uh, actually coming out Politically, and you know, because you can see, he learned his lesson the hard way by going before Congress and having people just, you know, whip the heck out of him as he uh, stood there and, you know, uh, before committees and people criticized him uh, for the, the way he ran the company. So, would you say that he is uh, similarly inclined to some of the statements that have emanated from places like Google, uh, Larry and Sergey and Sundar? about uh, doing everything they can to depose Trump in 2020 to not let happen not let 2016 happen again which is what they explicitly said in their confab after the 2016 election I think I think it's different. I think you know, clearly there's a lot of liberals in Silicon Valley, and though Mark isn't explicit about it, my guess is that you know uh, in the 2016 election he wasn't a Trump supporter. Uh, the day after the election, there was a big meeting at Facebook. I, I talked about this in my book, and people were in tears, um, and they wondered, do we participate in this? Do we help Trump get elected? And that was thought of, of, of as not a positive thing among many people at Facebook. Facebook. Mark himself has been very sensitive, though, to those charges. And, and even though Facebook very emphatically says we don't tilt the playing field to liberal or conservative, uh, uh, Mark, you know, uh, is listened to, you know, carefully to a lot of the uh, criticisms. There's been a lot of criticisms that come from the right about about Facebook. And at one point, he hired um, Senator, former Senator John Kyle, um, actually Kyle became a senator again you know, during the course of the investigation to look, look into that. Um, and he, he's tried to address that. And actually, that's caused internal problems in Facebook. And Facebook's employees wonder, you know, where, where are we standing on there? So it's, it's a difficult issue for Facebook to negotiate. They want to be seen as neutral, but uh, there's so much politics on the platform that they, they can't get ahead of that. So it may be it's, it seems to me that Zuckerberg is more reluctant, whereas um, there's a lot more alacrity over at Twitter and Apple and Google uh, and Amazon to uh, get involved in electoral politics and really uh, try to use their influence to determine the, the 2020 outcome for starters. But but despite not having technically a James Damore type of incident, Facebook sort of did a couple of years ago when Palmer Lucky was fired, the uh, the co-founder of the virtual uh, of, of Oculus View, the virtual right. reality platform. And, and how, right. did, how I, did the I, firing I, yeah. of Palm? How how did yeah. that impact yeah. sort of the trajectory of Facebook since? Well, that, that's a great point because I actually get very deeply into that in, in, into the book, and and I know Palmer, you know, and I've written about his new company even um, uh, for Wired. Uh, you know, Palmer. Um, Bought, you know, uh, helped a comp uh, of an organization buy some billboards uh, that were anti-Hillary Clinton. And when this came out that he was the funder behind these billboards, I think he spent ten thousand dollars, which was a pretty small percentage of the fortune he made when he sold his company to Facebook. Um, you know, the people in Facebook went insane, and. 
uh, he, they told him to stop coming into work. Um, they didn't fire him. And the reason they didn't fire him, it seems, is because they actually needed him to testify in a lawsuit that a company uh, was filing against Facebook uh, about the circumstances under which they bought his company. So they didn't want to get rid of him and make him an enemy for that lawsuit. But they told him not to come into work, and eventually – he said, there's no place for you here. I found that was sort of ironic because at the same time they were doing that, there is a conservative on Facebook's board. It was one of Facebook's original uh, investors, Peter Thiel, who is right. close with the, the Trump administration. So at the same time you know, that they were telling Palmer, don't come to work, um, they were defending Peter Thiel when people were complaining, why is he on our board, um, and saying, well, we want diversity on the board. We want diversity of political opinion. So there's, there's two – we're two th- – concurrent things going on there. Palmer um, didn't have a place at Facebook, but Peter Thiel did. And as we see, uh, Peter's still active and uh, went with uh, Mark Zuckerberg recently to have uh, dinner with Donald Trump. When it uh, when it comes to Facebook's future, what is it that uh, how is their business model evolving? What is it that Mark Zuckerberg wants Facebook to ultimately be? I found it interesting. I was covering Facebook, you know, and they cooperated with this book. They gave me access to their employees. Um, they told former employees, go talk to him. And, of course, I talked to people out, outside the company as well. So during the three years of controversy of Facebook, I was looking at it from the inside. And I saw that they're shifting their uh, center of gravity somewhat to, from the the news feed, which we all encounter uh, at Facebook. It's that big stream of stuff that has everything from you know, news items to um, you know, your cousin got married. Um, uh, they're moving the center of gravity to the private messaging services um, like Instagram and, and WhatsApp and, because uh, – it's less controversial, and um, and they, they want to monetize those. They see that as, as, as the, the way to the future. Um, and in the last um, a couple of years, uh, Mark has eased out the founders of those companies that he bought that have tremendous audiences now um, and bringing them closer into the Facebook families. The Facebook family is more unified now um, as opposed to having the Facebook blue app, as it's called, with the news feed and then separate apps for Instagram and WhatsApp and and even Oculus. What's uh, Zuckerberg's greatest fear with respect to federal government action? What is he trying to prevent the federal government from doing to Facebook? Well, he, he says he's on board with regulation, and I've watched him as he evolved to accommodate himself to that. But uh, they have a huge Washington operation, a very big lobbying organization, and so they want regulation on their terms. Um, and I think that uh, <clears throat> uh, Facebook is a, a, a big, powerful company, and they would like uh, regulation to be something that they can handle. They have incredible resources, and um, they've been forced to hire uh, foul, literally tens of thousands of people to moderate the content. Um, and certain kinds of regulations might have uh, make it difficult for smaller companies to regulate their content uh, because they wouldn't have the funds, uh, particularly startups, uh, where Facebook could handle that. So I think the fear is that Facebook would be regulated in a way uh, that – thwarts their main business model, which is uh, using data to sell ads to people. He is Stephen Levy. He's the uh, editor-at-large of Wired, and he's also the author of the new book, Facebook, The Inside Story. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the book. It's my pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The answer. Balance of nature, changing the world one life at a time. Uh, the number one reason I started taking Balance of Nature was the quality and I think the proven science behind it piqued my interest. I've tried so many different types of supplements, whether they're dietary supplements or just general vitamins. This is the only dietary supplement that I've ever taken where I actually felt a noticeable change. To me, that's just, that, that speaks volumes.
you know. Don't wait to see what getting over 10 servings of whole fruits and vegetables every day can do for you. Right now, Balance of Nature is offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order of fruits and veggies. Start your journey to better health today by calling 1-800-2468-751 or by going to balanceofnature.com and make sure to receive this special radio offer by using discount code CHICAGO.